Hello, I'm Father Daniel Brereton, and welcome to the Anglican Church of St. John the Baptist Dixie in Mississauga, Ontario. This is Cloud of Witnesses, our weekly reflection on the life of a Christian commemorated in our church calendar for the way in which their life uh, was a witness to the good news of Jesus in their own day and time. And by reflecting on their lives, it's, uh, it's my hope that we will be inspired to be witnesses to Christ in our own day and time. Tonight, we commemorate the life and martyrdom of Bernard Mazzecchi, who was a catechist, a lay teacher uh, for the Anglican Church in uh, what is now modern-day Zimbabwe. He died in 1896, and we'll talk a little bit about his life in a few moments. But first, if you have a small candle that you would like to light um, to set aside this time as sacred time and space, in which to encounter the presence of Christ in his word uh, and in the life of his witnesses. Please light your candle now. Make sure you can keep an eye on it safely during our time together. And we're going to begin tonight with uh, the Collect Prayer for uh, the Feast of Bernard Mazzecchi. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your holy martyr, Bernard Mazzecchi, grant us, your servants, a like faith and power of love, that we who rejoice in his triumph may profit by his example, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading for uh, this day's commemoration is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 18, and I'll be reading from the NRSV version. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. On June 18th, the Anglican Church of Canada, along with other churches, commemorates the life of Bernard Mazzecchi, who was martyred in 1896 uh, while serving as a lay catechist, a teacher to the Shona people of Africa. Bernard uh, originally became a Christian through the ministry of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, uh, an order of Anglican monastics, sometimes called the Cowley Fathers, who still run a monastery in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in which I'm an associate of. Bernard longed to teach the faith to others, and so he was commissioned by the bishop to work as a lay catechist in the village of Noe in Mishonaland, which is near modern-day Harare. There he built a mission complex, studied the local languages, and however busy he was, uh, always found time each day to recite the, off the daily prayer offices of morning and evening prayer. His commitment to the people his deep life of faith and commitment to prayer moved the hearts of the villagers, and many of them, over the course of five years, uh, became baptized as Christians. The church in Zimbabwe began to grow rapidly. In 1896, however, uprisings began against colonial rule. Many nationalists regarded all missionaries and members of the Anglican Church as working for the colonial government, and Bernard was warned to flee. He didn't know what to do, and so uh, we're told he prayed, and in the midst of his prayer, he had a vision of an old man 
racked with sores, who had come to him some time ago and whom uh, Bernard had rescued and taken in. How could he leave those such as this man to starve? So he wrote to the local priest and said, these people are suffering. The bishop has put me here, so here I must stay. How can I leave my people in such a time of darkness? Two days later, on June 18th, at midnight, three men arrived at the door of his home and dragged him outside. One of them thrust a spear into his side and left him for dead. Bernard managed to climb up a, a hillside to a spring where he washed his wounds with water, and that's where his wife found him. And he said to her, although I am dying, my work will continue. She went to find bandages, and when she came back, she said she saw a brilliant light and heard the sound as if, as if it was the flapping of a great flock of birds. When she arrived at the place where she had left Bernard, his body was gone and it was never found. Bernard Menzeki is revered to this day throughout Central Africa and indeed the whole church uh, because of his witness as to the gospel of Christ. And yet the persecution of Christians would continue for many years. Under Robert Mugabe, who closed the doors of churches and shut down congregations who were not uh, publicly supportive of his regime, commemoration of Mzeki, who was seen as a traitor to indigenous African rule, was especially condemned. And yet, as he said, his life and his work would continue. So what gave Bernard such strength and such courage? I think we can answer that partly from the reading from uh, today, from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. First, Paul says, rejoice in hope. Those who knew Bernard always spoke of his extraordinary joy when he faced the task of, of opening a new mission in a new country where he couldn't even speak the local language at first. He said, it is my joy to serve God because God has done so much for me. So what is, it, what is it we hope for? And can we find joy in waiting on God for its fulfillment? Secondly, Paul writes, be patient in affliction. Although Bernard was urged to leave the village where he was not safe, he remained. I cannot leave my people in such a time of darkness, he said. Is God asking us to remain somewhere in something that we might want to run away from, and yet to be patient in affliction, to see what God may be able to do with us, even in that place that's so uncomfortable. And thirdly, be faithful in prayer. I love the image of Bernard in the midst of all that he was doing, uh, still praying the daily offices faithfully each day. He made that the first thing he did in the morning and the last thing he did in the evening, committing the entire day and everything he did in it to God. Is God inviting us to a deeper and more vibrant life of prayer to sustain us in our own trials and to encourage us in our own work and ministry? These three things underpinned Bernard's life. Rejoicing in hope, being patient in affliction, being faithful in prayer. May these things underpin and transform our own lives and witnesses as well. And now we join together in a universal prayer uh, prayed by Christians throughout the ages across the globe, which has sustained them in their own life and witness the Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this uh, time of prayer, uh, scripture reading, and reflection on the life of one of our Christian witnesses. And may his life inspire you to rejoice in hope, 
be patient in affliction, and to persevere in prayer. And until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you.